Now I'm sure everyone's heard of by now that in 2030 all new cars sold must be fully electric. And with brands releasing electric cars left, right and centre and all shapes and sizes, which one do you pick? Now Mercedes-Benz have been working extremely hard over the past several years on the EQ brand and now there's a new kid on the block. Ladies and gentlemen, today I bring you the all new electric EQA. Hi guys and welcome to the channel. My name is Nick O'Leary. Now today, I'm really, really excited. In this episode, we've got the Mercedes-Benz EQA hot off the production line. Hardly anyone has seen this car yet. So even I haven't driven it. So we're gonna do that later, but first an introduction. Now the EQA is Mercedes-Benz's third all electric model sitting right next to the EQC and EQV. And I think this is the most important one yet. It sits in a price bracket just above the GLA 250e, the plug-in hybrid. And for a few thousand pounds more, you can go fully electric. Now at a glance, this model does look like the GLA and you wouldn't be wrong in thinking that. The dimensions are very, very similar, apart from the length, which is about 53 millimeters difference between the two. Uh, but yeah, dimensions otherwise are virtually the same, but there are a few key differences on the exterior that do differentiate between the two. For starts, you've got the grille, which is completely flush to the car, which is really, really nice to see because it being an all electric model, you don't actually need that much airflow going into the front of the car. So completely flush and you've got this single line just going either side of the Mercedes-Benz star. And speaking of lines, there are also light bars as well. So single light bar going across the front of the car. And there's also one on the rear of the car as well. Now this one here today is the EQA Sport, which features 18 inch alloy wheels. Now, if you wanted, you can also get AMG line, which kind of adds more sportier, more aggressive looks. Um, now I don't have one here, unfortunately, to show at the moment, as much as I would like to see one. Uh, but if I run my finger across the screen here, you can see we can add AMG line to this car. And as you look really, really closely, you can see it'll add uh, some kind of sportier elements to the wheels and then also to the front left and front right bumpers among a few other things. Oh and while we're on the topic of exterior design it's got one of these a projection light. Now you only usually find these on a GLE or GLS in Mercedes so this is quite cool this being on an EQA. Now they actually do serve a purpose uh, so at night time when it's uh, really dark outside this will illuminate the floor so you can actually see where you're going and also highlighting puddles that might be there now um, you could just use a light but um, why not use a mercedes logo instead now the eqa boot is slightly less than the gla and the reason for this is because of the lithium-ion battery used to run the car now that is actually located right underneath. So it's actually the underfloor storage space that's lost. The top bit to me looks almost the same, but as I said, it's about 60 liters less. Uh, there is an opening here. This bit basically uh, just allows you to put a couple of things. Uh, we've got the manual first aid kit and locking bolts and tire repair kit there. Um, but you've also got the cables in these bags here. Uh, quite simply, there's a slow one and a fast one, but we'll cover more on that later. Uh, and you can also fold the seats down as well, just in case you need a bit more space. You can fold a 40-20-40 split, and they're done from the rear seats just on the inside. Now, as I mentioned, as this model is a sport, it has a lighter interior on this particular one. But if you go for AMG line, you'll also get the usual Artico man-made leather with dynamic and microfiber in the middle featuring red stitching. The actual design of the interior isn't that far off the GLA either. In fact, if you owned a GLA for a year and then hopped into this one, you'd pretty much know where all the buttons are. 
Now, of course, as this is a brand new model, it features MBUX, which is Mercedes-Benz's latest multimedia system. However, as this is an electric car, it does feature a new menu called EQ, and EQ stands for Electric Intelligence. In this menu, among a few other menus in the car, allow you to control a few electric topics. So these can be anything from searching for charging stations, um, programming routes in or sat nav and actually seeing where you should stop to complete a journey if it's further afield. Um, you can even set your departure time, pre-entry climate control as well and even set up different profiles for charging which is quite cool. Now going back onto the sat nav, as this is MBUX it has European uh, map updates uh, that are completed roughly three four times a year but most importantly it has instead of fuel stations charge points and there is a button just over here on the left so if I tap that that's going to show me all the charge points nearby and quite cleverly as well these little arrows here point in the direction they actually are in relation to where you are so it's quite clever you don't have to do this as I said you can just type something in on the navigation and it will kind of route you to a charge point if you're going further afield there is a very cool feature that a lot of people don't know about though if you go to settings enable this thing called range and what that will do is enable an overview on the map so i'm just going to set this to north facing for the uh, for the map and if i zoom out we will see this kind of big ring around where i am and that there is how far i can travel on 100% charged as you just saw now um, that's pretty much almost to Liverpool from the looks of it in the UK and um, yeah pretty much the entire yeah pretty much uh, about half the length of the UK now of course I would encounter traffic so it would be probably around about that maybe just below and besides as this car is brand new um, my driving style might be a bit different to how the car's default driving style might be so uh, the range might vary just ever so slightly but it is a fair old distance and of course this car does feature rapid charging as well uh, we'll cover that shortly now going back to MBUX MBUX uh, all the normal functions are here so uh, anything you'd usually find in a, uh, a normal petrol or diesel car so these can include things like phone in this here you can connect your phone via Bluetooth and you can actually connect up to three devices uh, two phones so uh, maybe driver and passenger that you can also have someone being the DJ as well. So three devices connected at any given time. Uh, across here we have the sat nav which we've just covered. So um, along here along the bottom is the menu that you'll usually use to control the sat nav from where to, the finish uh, little flag and then the mute symbol. And then there's a few advanced settings there. Radio, so it has full FM and DAB radio. And then we have media which lets you play music via Bluetooth or via the USB-C ports. Uh, USB-C ports in here are located in here, so there's one in here and then one in the centre armrest as well. Uh, the few other menus allow you to control the ambient lighting and yes there are 64 colours of ambient lighting to choose from. And you can even do multicolour as well, so if you wanted to change it up a bit you can have a couple of colours cycling through them which is quite cool. And then apart from that, there's a few settings and things relating to Mercedes Me, which is the app uh, which allows you to unlock and lock the car remotely, uh, locate the car on a map, and also look at uh, statistical information, so things like tyre pressures, range, how you've been driving, that kind of thing. Now moving very quickly onto the rear seats, I've actually set these two seats up uh, for my sitting and driving position. Uh, I'm about six foot two, so I can actually sit behind myself, and there's you know there's a fair amount of uh, legroom here. Uh, you've even got USB-C ports down here for charging your phone, vents for the rear passengers, oh, and the centre armrest with Mercedes-Benz's very fancy cup holders. They go in there. I'll fold those away for now, and all round very very nice. Now, normally at this point, I talk about the engines which are available. Now, in a Mercedes EQ model, it doesn't have an engine, so it has a battery and an electric motor. Now, that electric motor produces 190 horsepower, and the lithium-ion battery is a 66.5 kilowatt hour battery. So, with all of that in mind, its official range is 263 miles based on a WLTP test. Now, WLTP stands for a Worldwide Harmonised Light Vehicles Test Procedure. And basically what that means is it's a standard test for all models 
uh, all manufacturers that they all do and it kind of sets a benchmark for the best range you'll get in ideal conditions. Now conditions unfortunately aren't always ideal, you'll usually encounter traffic, have your heating on and sometimes the weather isn't always uh, on our side. However, it does show you what the car can achieve in the best conditions. So with all that aside, what is it like to drive? Let's find out. So perfect, car is outside, it's fully charged. The only thing now is to load up my profile. So if I just tap on this screen, then tap on my name. Yes, I want to activate the profile. That load up all the settings the way I usually have them. All loaded through Mercedes Me. Perfect, that's all done. So, starting an electric car. Well, quite simply, when you hop in, it'll be a bit like this. And to start it, your foot will go on the brake and you press the start stop button just here and a couple of clicks and that's it. However, what you're looking for is the green ready on the instrument cluster. So if I switch it off, it will say not ready to drive. If I switch it on, it will then say ready, vehicle ready to drive. So that green ready means everything's on. And quite simply, all you do then is use the gear selector over here. So you've got down for drive, up for reverse, and then the button on the end for park, which also does the handbrake as well. So into drive, away we go. So first impressions of the EQA 250, well, it actually reminds me back in 2018 on the A-Class. So the A180 and A200 both have 1.3 litre petrol engines. And it's reminded me of that same thing because back then on paper, I looked at that and I went 1.3 litre. Mm, I don't know if that's gonna be quick enough. And sure enough, as soon as I was behind the wheel and went for a drive, I was like, okay, yeah, pretty quick. It's not slow by any means. And I should have known better. I did exactly the same thing this. I was thinking, not to 60 time, 8.9 seconds. I don't know, is that fast enough? Don't know. And sure enough, behind the wheel, it's, it's pretty quick. It's electric, I should have known better. Electric has instant torque. So when you put your foot down, you don't have to wait for the engine to kind of rev up or anything. It's just there, the power's available. And of course there are different drive modes to choose from. So in an EQA 250 on dynamic select, this little switch down here, you can change it from eco. Uh, so on here it will say speed, limit, uh, speed limited, possible to exceed the speed limit by uh, going to the kick down. So the accelerator pedal has this kind of um, uh, little uh, pressure point that will stop you from going past that point uh, but if you press past that pressure point uh, then you're going to like the kick down like an automatic then there's comfort mode which is uh, just the normal balance of power and um, uh, economy and then there's sport mode so sport mode will give you the maximum power for the car and obviously it being completely electric you know I'm, I'm doing 30 at the moment but there is a dual carriageway up here so we'll um, will accelerate from uh, what we'll probably be doing about, I guess, 15, 20 round the corner and then go all the way up to 70. It really doesn't take long. It's um, it's deceiving because on paper that, that 0 60 time doesn't look too fast, but behind the wheel, because electric is so responsive, I don't feel you need like a fast 0 60 time because, yeah, it's cool to show off and that kind of thing, but you know, driving the car every day, you just need something that's responsive and electric always, always, always delivers on that. Right, here's the roundabout. So let me just uh, get onto the dual carriageway. Oh, perfect, all the road is nice and clear. So let me come around this corner at about 20 miles an hour. Straight road. Right, 20, going to 70 now. Oh, there we go, there's that electric power and 70 just like that that doesn't take long so yeah electric just having that instant torque is just 
It's just great. I want one. Now, for those of you that may be wondering, in case you're thinking, Nick, it's an EQA250. There are electric cars out there that have faster 0 to 60 times, and I want one of those. I know it's not all about 0 to 60, but if you need something a bit faster, I have heard of a rumor, and there are a couple of new EQA models potentially coming out towards the uh, later part of this year. I think they're going to be called EQA 300 and EQA 350 uh, with 0 to 60 times of around about the 6 second mark so they're going to be a little bit quicker and I think one of them is even going to have dual motors as well so uh, oh and of course one having 4Matic um, so that will be interesting to see uh, so I mean for me I, I, I love the speed of this you know it's, it's very very responsive of course being electric but if you need something a bit more powerful hang fire for a minute there might be a couple of new models coming out i don't know for sure but it's just kind of what i've heard in the pipeline and the rumors so let's talk about charging so as this is an electric car you'll of course be doing a bit of charging most of the charging will hopefully be done at your home with some off-road parking you'll get a wall box installed um, but what I want to try out is public charging and while we're on that public charger uh, we'll then go through the different charging rates and speeds and that kind of thing so um, let's find the charger so I'm going to use the um, the inbuilt sat nav in fact let's let's really test it hey Mercedes let's just turn her up a tiny bit more I don't know if you heard that let me press the back button hey Mercedes how may I help you? Navigate me to the nearest charge point, please. She's thinking about it. Ooh. Oh, she's found one. There we go. Right, let's tap on that one. Calculating route. That is literally just round the corner. How convenient. So, we're going to go down here and this charge point is compatible with a thing called Mercedes Me Charge. Now, I haven't made a video on Mercedes Me Charge just yet. In all honestly, I'm just waiting for some warmer weather and when all of the lockdowns and things like that end. Uh, but I will be covering a Mercedes Me Charge video in the future. So when I have done that, I will link that at the top of this video so you can jump straight to that. Um, hopefully it should be the summer of this year. So Let's go around to this charge point and start a charging session. So here it is, the charge point. Now, uh, as I just mentioned, there are different charge point providers around everywhere. So it does depend on which charge point you visit. Uh, some have different speeds and things like that, uh, but we'll cover this more on the Mercedes Me Charge video. Quite simply, in this car, there are a couple of ways of charging. There is a cable for the three pin connector in your house. Uh, albeit that's 2.3 kilowatts that's a very very slow way of doing it i would imagine most owners will probably keep that cable in the packaging and never use it or maybe only use it in a an emergency or something so the uh, bright yellow cable uh, is rated at 7.2 kilowatts so that will charge the car a lot quicker uh, it's more an overnight charge uh, for an eqa so it's around about 11 hours from uh, about 10 to 100 percent um, now, a charge point like this also has a CCS connector. So on an EQA, there is another port. There's a Type 2 connector port on the uh, top, and then underneath there's a CCS connector, which uh, is the left-hand one from the looks of it just here. And this one, if you can just about see on the screen there, it says 50 kilowatts. Now, the EQA can actually receive up to 100. So uh, this one... You can plug it in, it's just not going to charge at the fastest speed because this charge point doesn't operate at that speed. Um, I know Ionity do operate at uh, very high speeds, so those you'll usually find uh, along a route somewhere, maybe on a, a motorway or something. So um, let's, uh, let's start this charge. Right, so I've just parked the car up really, really close. I've never actually done this before, so... We're doing this for the first time, so what we'll do, we'll go to EQ, that's kind of where I think it would be. Search for charging stations, that's the one that um, is here, the Willet Arms. And just underneath, oh, there we go, start charging session. So if I tap on that one, 
Uh, charging tariff, AC, charging fees. We are 25 pence per kilowatt hour. So um, the average uh, cost in the UK for electricity is about 15 pence uh, in the house, but usually in public it's a little bit more. So that's absolutely fine. Charging session started. Right, let's go plug it in. Oh yeah, would you look at that? So I ha I've literally just pressed that on the inside as you just saw, and it now says connect your vehicle. So I haven't actually do anything on there. So let's uh, undo this one. I'm gonna use the CCS connector. And this is this big old connector here. So this one and pop him in there. Let's have a look, see what it says on the screen. Oh, look at that. So it's even communicating the car's status as well. So if I now go look inside the car, oh yeah, there we go. Well, that is definitely the easiest charging procedure I've ever done before. So um, normally you have to you know, sit in the car and if it's the first time you're using that particular charge point and that provider, you'll have to register your details, put in your uh, car's registration number, credit cards, debit cards, that kind of thing. So admittedly, I did do that before and register it on Mercedes Me Charge, but the difference here is you can start it on the car. So MBUX just taking things a little step further and just making your life so much easier. So. Uh, it says it's going to be done in about 10 minutes, so uh, I may as well wait till it's finished. And there we go, that's it all fully charged. So that really didn't take long at all. I mean, that was 50 kilowatts, but as I mentioned, the car can uh, actually receive up to 100, but it just depends on how fast that charge point is that you visit. Ionity being um, one of the ones that can charge um, up to even higher speeds. And yes, you can plug your car into a charge point which um, has a high speed. The car will just kind of regulate and only receive what it can receive, uh, which is 100 kilowatts. Now, charging at home is about uh, 2.3 kilowatts, of course, on the domestic socket, the three pin socket, and then 7.2 kilowatts on the wall box. In public is where you'll find the faster ones, just like that one. And there we go guys, that concludes this week's video on the Mercedes-Benz EQA 250. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below and don't forget that like button and of course hit that subscribe button if you want to see more future videos just like this one. Until next week, see you then.